uh, my second part of my reflection on Hypatia, uh, a Greek uh, philosopher from uh, fourth and fifth uh, century, uh, will be more uh, in the spirit of Wirkungsgeschichte, namely how uh, her life, her work, inspired uh, uh, the modern uh, feministic uh, reflection, but also uh, perhaps it will be worth it to stop a little bit uh, and to reflect on the role of the women generally in our human history. And of course, uh, since the life and, and particularly the dramatic death of Hypatia is uh, connected with uh, Christianity, perhaps uh, we can briefly uh, reflect on the role and place of women in, in, uh, in Christian uh, tradition, and particularly in the Bible, since uh, Christianity, together with uh, Judaism, as we already know, treat uh, the Bible, the Old Testament and the New Testament as, as the source and the inspiration for, um, for life, for culture, also for, for philosophy, as, 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 we, as you perfectly know. So the first uh, element of my reflection will be to look briefly on some uh, women in the Bible. Uh, perhaps uh, you know, you read, I'm sure, many times even the uh, first book of the Bible, Genesis, and uh, the first uh, woman figure there is Eve. Uh, you remember the creation uh, of first uh, humans, uh, Adam uh, and Eve, and uh, how it goes. Uh, we are fully immersed in this mythical uh, story about uh, paradise, the garden, and how Eve uh, tempted uh, Adam, she was tempted before by serpent, etc, etc. But what is uh, usually how Eve as the first woman is seen is someone who is uh, tempting a, a poor man, who is innocent, who is uh, naive, and this uh, cute woman <laughs> is, is the first who give him an, an apple or an fruits, we don't know what it, what it is, but in the uh, history we, we, we used to see in this uh, an apple, because in, in the paintings we saw many times how Eva giving to Adam this apple and suddenly they realize that they are naked, that they are ashamed of her nakedness, uh, they feel that they uh, trespasses some commandments, and so on and so on. So uh, the first uh, presence of the woman in the Bible is not very, very positive. But in the feministic uh, interpretation, we see in this uh, model or this image of Eve, a woman who is more intelligent, more curious, uh, uh, to discover new things. She is not blindly obeying what uh, God said, but is trying to discover new things. So it's a, it's a very creative new interpretation, feministic interpretation of the biblical, uh, of the biblical uh, myth. Uh, the same we can discover, I don't know, for example, a Deborah is a, a woman who is a prophet in the book uh, of Judges, and she is someone who encourages uh, men to, to fight, uh, to, 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 to win, uh, and so on and so on. We have many examples of heroic women in the Bible. Uh, so, uh, using, uh, again, uh, creative, uh, imaginative, uh, feministic interpretation of the holy text, a holy for, for followers of Judaism or Christianity, we can discover that women played uh, an important uh, 
dynamic, creative role in the history of humankind. And what about the New Testament? Uh, we used to think about uh, New Testament, about Christianity as a very misogynic, uh, patriarchal religion where uh, who has to say uh, they are men, of course. Jesus is the founder and St. Paul is the founder of second founder of Christianity, the apostles. And where are women? Where <laughs> They are not present there as a, as a founding mothers. Only only men has to 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 say something. But again, if you apply uh, a feministic interpretation, we discover that the most uh, uh, important conversation which uh, Jesus had during his life were with women, because women were curious. They were asking him what it really means. Uh, that uh, you are bringing new religion. It's a famous conversation with the Samaritan woman. And Jesus explained her that the old form of, of, of worship uh, are already old fashioned. The new will come, a new way of worship God everywhere. It's a, this is a conversation with women. And all, even in the most tragic moments uh, in Jesus' lives, uh, life, we, we, we see also women. Uh, they are under his cross, his mother, his other. They, it's also Apostle John, but two or three women are, are closely to, to suffering Jesus at the end of his life. And also at the, after his resurrection, he appeared also to to, to women as the first testimony of his resurrection, like his overcoming death and uh, the new new religion, right? Was proclaimed by women. They saw him as a alive, etc. And Paul, what about Paul? Paul, who is considered again as a misogynic, uh, who is uh, preaching uh, so many things about sin, about temptations, about body as, as sinful, etc., etc. But ex exactly the same Paul, if you read him, his letters, you will see many names of women uh, who played important role in his life. They prepared him. They, they uh, were actually working with him on, on the same level as partners. So again, also in, in the New Testament, you see uh, uh, women uh, playing a, a key, key role in, in development of the new religion. And so on, we, we arrive to the fourth and fifth century where we have Hypatia. And we have, even in, during her life, during the life of this philosopher, we have a legend of St. Katharina of uh, of, of Alexandria, the Christian saint, uh, which uh, who has uh, some traces in her legend uh, of the life of Hypatia. So we have this uh, confusion between uh, uh, a pagan a Greek philosopher and uh, the Christian saint. So uh, why I'm saying this? Because this is the invitation to re- uh, um, rethink a new a role of women also in our culture. The feminism, and this is the reason why Hypatia became a, a model for many feministic movements, as someone who took her destiny in not only in her hands, but she also influenced others. And we can, uh, taking uh, life of Hypatia as a departure point for our reflection, we can discover almost in every uh, period of our human history an important contribution of women in uh, shaping her time. They will take only a few examples. Uh, I will, uh, she was. Uh, uh, I don't remember exactly by uh, whom, by whom, by Paul the Sixth or, or someone else. Uh, Teresa of Avila. She she was a, a, a very important saint of 16th uh, 
century Spain, uh, who um, founded, I don't know how many monasteries, and left uh, important writings, and particularly her autobiography, which is the part of uh, Siglo de Oro, the, the century, uh, golden century of Spanish literature, which is uh, not possible to understand with, without uh, uh, Teresa of Avila. Of course, we have also John of the Cross, um, but nevertheless, uh, in, in today we are focused on, on the women, how women contributed to, to our culture, how their uh, charisma, their talents, their way of approaching problems, they really change the life. So um, what, uh, what I try to, to convince you that we have to look at, our, at the past uh, with different eyes, with eyes of women who were really uh, important in their own time. And uh, today we have a lot of uh, uh, philosophers. Uh, remember, I mentioned uh, Martha Nussbaum, for example. But uh, taking into consideration theology, because we are again in, in this uh, cross between philosophy and then the religion so taking the the women who are working with the theological theme with with the sacred text with the bible i can uh, think of one uh, beautiful very important and perhaps the most important uh, theologian in the united states since you are Americans, so perhaps it's good to know that Elizabeth Johnson, who is a professor of theology at Fordham University and wrote extensively on exactly this feministic dimension of Christianity. So sometimes what we see uh, that feminism, that women, uh, uh, protesting women on the streets of Poland since October are uh, against uh, Christianity or against church is, is not true because we, we see a lot of women who are, as a women, uh, developing critical reflection on, on what it means to be a Christian today. And uh, exactly Elizabeth Johnson is one of them who is showing how it's possible to reconcile science and uh, theology, uh, science, for example, Darwinian's uh, theory and uh, Christian theology. She wrote a beautiful book about this, just uh, showing that it's not a contradiction be between uh, admiration for creation, for ecology, for uh, embracing even the uh, animals, all creation into your own way of, of, of living your life. So I, I would uh, suggest that uh, we have to rethink uh, the place of women in our history and we have to stop to think in this uh, um, exclusive uh, uh, presence of women in, uh, in our uh, tradition, in our history. So you don't have to fight against uh, anybody if you want to be a feminist, as I consider my, myself a feminist, uh, because I see a beauty of and complementarity of uh, philosophy and thinking made by men and by women. And we can be in creative, uh, dialogue all the time with one another and it will be uh, the third uh, part of my uh, introduction to our as usual i'm sure lovely conversation uh, during the class